Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to explore the 2021 AMG 10A problem number 20. And this problem is very easy to make a mistake on. So you definitely want to be careful with what you're doing. We basically want to find how many ways the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 can be rearranged so that no three consecutive terms are increasing and no three consecutive terms are decreasing. So there's two ways to solve the problem. One is using pi and the other is using casework. And there's probably, there might be more ways to solve the problem actually, but I'm going to show you the pi solution in this video. The case solution is also very similar, but the pi solution, I think is a little, little bit easier. Basically, how many ways can we arrange this? So let's use complementary counting and pi. So rather than counting how many ways such that no three terms are increasing, no three decreasing, let's find how many such that at least one, or at least one set of three terms or one set of three terms are decreasing. So how can we do this? using pi or the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So the first thing to notice is how many ways are there where just three numbers are increasing or decreasing? Well, for that to happen, let's say we have five slots, okay? So let's say that if the first three terms are, let's say, increasing or decreasing, how many ways can we have? Well, there's five to three ways to choose three terms. So choose three of five numbers. So we choose three of the five numbers of the five numbers one through five to be in, the, in our sequence of increasing or decreasing numbers. And now let's say we choose numbers, I don't know, one, two, and four. So now that we choose the numbers, now do we choose? Do we, do, we, do we want our sequence to be increasing or decreasing? So increasing would be one, two, four. Decreasing would be four, two, one. There's two choices. So increase or decrease. So in, I'll say increase or decrease. Because now I'm multiplying by 5 to 3, we're multiplied by 2. Now, what about the other terms? There, let's say the remaining, in this case, the remaining two terms are 3 and 5. There's two ways to switch the two terms. So times 2. Right? And this is equal to 40. But remember, the three terms that are consecutively increasing or decreasing don't necessarily have to be the first three terms. They can be the first three terms. They can be terms 2 through 4. They can be terms 3 through 5. So really, we're dealing with 40 times 3. But as the principle of inclusion and exclusion, we must subtract the overlaps between different pairs. So we're overcounting a lot here. So next step to PIE is to look at the overlaps, the so duplicates between, since we're counting three pair, sets of three numbers, there's overlaps between each pair of those three numbers. So let's take a look at the first overlap case. So the first overlap is that let's say we have the first three numbers are consecutively increasing or decreasing, and the next two numbers are also increasing or decreasing. So in this case, we can see that, well, if th the first three numbers are increasing or decreasing, and the next three numbers are also increasing or decreasing, we can see that it, it, the numbers will be of the form, let's say this number is A, this number is B, this number is C, this number is D. It's not possible to have the first three numbers increasing and the next three numbers decreasing. It's just not possible because if the first three numbers are increasing, let's say, then we know A is less than B is less than C. But in order to have the next three numbers decreasing, we need to have B be greater than C. But these both can happen. So that therefore we know that the red numbers have the, the first three numbers have to be increasing and the first next three numbers have to be increasing or the first three numbers have to the first three numbers have to be decreasing and the next three numbers have to be decreasing as well. So what that means is that essentially the four numbers have to be increasing or decreasing, right? So if the four numbers are increasing or decreasing, now what are the possibilities? Well, out of the five numbers, we choose four numbers. So it's very similar to the expansion. So we we have to choose four of the five numbers. So we choose four of the five numbers. Okay, so now that we chose four of the five numbers, now what can we do? Now we can either have increasing or decreasing. So again, this is pretty standard compared to the expression last time. We do increasing times two for increasing slash decreasing. But next, we also have to multiply by one, or we don't have to actually multiply by, by one, but the last number, there's only one way. Like in the, in the first case, we have two numbers, so we can swap them. 
when you just have one number, there's only one possibility. It just goes in the remaining slot. So one way for the last possible number. So this is just going to be equal to 5 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 10. And remember, it does not necessarily have to be the first three and then the next three. It can also be, it's not necessarily have to be the first four numbers all consecutive. It can also be the net last four numbers consecutive. So we have actually to subtract two times 10 here. But then that's not it. We counted for the overlaps between the sets of the first three, the next three, the, the next three and the last three, or the middle three and the last three. We never counted the overlap between the first three and the last three. So now let's take a look at that, that case separately. So for the first three and last three case, we have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five numbers. The first three numbers, let's say they're increasing or decreasing. Last three, say they're also the same. Notice that in order for this to be true, we must have, if the first three are decreasing, let's say, let's say this is going to be A, let's actually have a possibility here. One possibility, like the previous case, is that, let's say the first three are, let's say first three are increasing. And then the last three are also increasing. In this case, the first three are increasing, the last three are increasing, what must be true of all five numbers? They all five must be increasing. So if A is less than B is less than C, and C is less than D is less than E, all five numbers are increasing. So the only possibility for all five numbers are increasing is the sequence one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So there's only going to only be one case in this case. The next case is that, let me just duplicate this. Oops, okay, let's write again. One, two, three, four, five. So we can have the first three be decreasing, and the last three also be decreasing. Okay, so, sorry, the last, yeah. So if this is true, we, we can see this actually can be the same thing, except it's also gonna have one way, except instead of one, two, three, four, five, it's gonna be five, four, three, two, one. So one way in this case as well. So now, what's the final two cases? The final case two cases can be first three can also be increasing. Let, let me draw my slots up first. So you can have that if you have five slots, we can have the first three be increasing. And then the last three be decreasing. So the first three are increasing, is this even possible? You might be asking. Well, yes, it is. Because the first three are increasing, the last three can be decreasing. We, but for that to happen, the, the middle number has to be the largest number. For example, the sequence 1, 2, 4, 5, 4, 3. This is a valid sequence because this is less than this and this is all true. Because 1 is less than 2 is less than 5. 5 is greater than 4 is greater than 3. So first three numbers are increasing, last three numbers are decreasing. By trying out a few values, you can see that this case is actually possible. It is possible to have the first three numbers increasing since each number is going to be greater than the number before it. And then for the last few numbers to be decreasing too, then basically what that means is that if you try experimenting, if you, let's say the middle number is four, let's say you want to think, is it possible for the middle number to be, let's say four? So let's say one, two, four, then, that's just, then you might see that, oh, now we have four and five, but then that's not decreasing. So you might, after a little bit of playing around, with this, you might notice that the middle number has to be the largest number, has to be five. So it has to be five. So if the middle number has to be five, what are the possibilities for the other four numbers? Out of the other four numbers, we choose two of them for the left, hand, left side, the left two numbers, and two of them for the left and right two numbers. So four, choose two, six, right? Okay, so what's the final thing we have to do? The final thing, the final thing we have to do is now we have six, and then we also have the last three case, and then the first three case, which is actually symmetric because that just means that it's gonna, we can just reverse our whole sequence and get the same thing. So it's also gonna, just gonna be six. So now in, the, in our original expression, we subtract two plus one plus one plus six plus six, which is 14. So we subtract 14. Now, remember PIE, we have to also add back something. So what do we add back? Well, the thing is we have to add back the overlap between all three sets. So if the first three are increasing or decreasing, middle three are increasing or decreasing, last three are increasing or decreasing. Well, we can see that if the, from our case that either all the numbers have to be increasing or all decreasing. There's no other way. Because we saw in our second case here that if two consecutive pairs of increasing and decreasing in terms of three numbers, then all four numbers have to be increasing. And then if there's another last 
set of three numbers, then all five numbers have to be increasing or decreasing. So how many ways are there to have all five numbers increasing or decreasing? There's only two sequences, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So we add back a two, which is gonna give 120 minus, so it's gonna be plus 14, minus 34 plus two, which is gonna be equal to, and remember, this is not our answer, 88. This is a complement. This is how many ways there to have three numbers increasing or decreasing. So our answer is actually gonna be 120 minus its quantity, which is 32. So D is the answer for this problem. Thanks to you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel to be notified about more new competition math videos. And also just to be clear here, the reason it's 120 is because there's five factorial ways to arrange all five numbers in the sequence and five factorials 120. Remember, you should memorize your common factorials. And just to summarize the main ideas before we end it, we basically took the key idea, we basically took the key cases of having PIE, where we have first and second sets overlapping, first and third sets overlapping, and second and third sets overlapping. Then we subtracted those overlaps from our original set count, and then we added back the final case where the first three numbers, next three, middle three, and last three numbers are all increasing or decreasing. And we found that that must be true for all five numbers being increasing or decreasing. So in general, you might be asking, when do we use PIE, the principle of inclusion or exclusion? The thing is, we use PIE is that when we think, when it seems easy to count the numbers, but then there seems overlap between several sets. We use PIE when, like in this problem, we see that it's easy to use PIE because we have three numbers consecutive in the beginning, so it's easy to subtract off systematically the cases. And you might be wondering the advantages of this over casework. The advantages of this over casework is that casework, you know, it's really hard to know whether you missed a case or anything. This, you know, you're systematically counting all the possibilities. So it's more, less error from the way than doing casework. Bye everyone.